嘿、hey, ，你好，欢迎回到 X t o n 今天我得说一下，我的天哪，这下 AGI 可能真的要来了。Cloud 呢，刚刚发布了一项新的功能啊，操作计算机 AI 已经可以像人一样操作计算机了。虽然现在只是公开测试阶段，但是呢，我们已经可以看到以后 AI 是怎么样越来越多的接管我们的事情的。我们可以见证人类的工作是怎样一步一步被 AI 给替代掉的。我们先来简单的过一遍 Cloud 的文档的重点，然后呢，再给大家看看 Cloud 的演示视频 ，AI 操作计算机的效果是什么样的。这就是 Anthropic 公司啊，也就是 Cloud 公司今天刚刚新鲜出炉的一篇文章，开发计算机使用模型。我们首先可以看到的就是 Cloud 现在可以使用计算机了。Cloud 3.5 Summit 现在已经可以按照用户的命令，在计算机屏幕上移动光标，点击相关的位置，并且通过键盘呢来输入信息。这已经完整的模拟了人们跟计算机之间的操作过程。当然，目前这项功能是属于公开测试阶段。他说是代表了人工智能进步的一个重大突破呀，这也确实是代表了人工智能的一个重大突破。那为什么要让 AI 去使用计算机呢？我觉得这个是任何人都能想到的。你很多的工作是通过计算机来完成的，那么一个能帮助你操作计算机的助手，那才真正称得上是一个助手。那这项功能呢，是来自于他们之前工具使用以及多模态的研究。正是有了多模态，所以 AI 就能够看到你计算机屏幕上的内容，它就可以去解读，通过它的推理能力来知道我该怎么去操作。所以实际上，过去一步一步发展起来的这些功能，都是在为更进一步的 AI 的崛起来做准备。那目前呢，如果开发者给 Cloud 的一款软件的访问权限的话 ，Cloud 就可以看到用户可以见到的屏幕截图。然后它就会计算光标需要移动多少个像素，然后到达正确的位置，然后去点击，这就是它最基本的一个操作原理啊。那它现在到了什么程度呢？在一个旨在测试开发者让模型使用计算机的评估当中 ，Cloud 得分是 14.9% 远远没有达到人类水平的技能，通常是 70% 之七十到七十但是远高于同类中下一个最佳 AI 模型获得的 7.7%。虽然看起来差距还很远， 1 4 9九到百分但是通过这一两年的 AI 的发展啊，其实这种差距我们已经不感冒了。今天看起来也许有百分之六七十的差距，那也许下一个月、明年就实现了。这篇文档当中呢，他提到了计算机使用的未来。那直到现在 ，LM 大语言模型的开发者一直在使工具来适应模型，但是我们可以做到是模型来适应工具。Cloud 就可以融入到我们每天使用的计算机环境了。这点啊，就是我在做 AI 自动化课程以来一直强调的一个观点啊。AI 跟现在的大量的应用之间无缝协作，才能发挥出最大的能力。这也就是为什么我要开发以 Make 自动化平台为主的 AI 课程的原因。因为 Make 它本身呢，就能跟数千种的 App 集成了。它作为一个更深层次的集成自动化平台呢，一定是有着越来越广泛的用途。但是，有一类的自动化工具可能就有点悬了，这就是那些模拟人类点击屏幕的自动化工具，它们有一个很明显的特点呀，就是录制用户的操作来达到自动化的目的，通过录制你在屏幕在电脑上的操作来达到自动化的目的，这跟 Make com 这样的平台是完全不一样的。这种方式呢，其实就是以前做软件自动化测试的一种方式。那这些工具现在所要做的呢，就是赶紧集成 AI 吧。好，后面也提到了 Cloud 目前它的新功能的局限性，比如拖动缩放还做不到啊等等。然后他们也有一些出错的演示视频，待会儿我一起给大家看一下。好，接下来我们就来看一下 Cloud 的演示视频。I'm Pooja and I'm a researcher at Anthropic. I'm going to show you a simple example of computer use today. My friend's coming to San Francisco next week, and I want to take him to do some touristy stuff. I think doing a sunrise hike with a view of the Golden Gate Bridge never gets old. So I'll ask Claude to figure out some logistics for us. I'll ask Claude to find a good place to see the sunrise to help me figure out timing logistics and help drop a calendar invite so I remember when I have to leave. It's opening Chrome, going to Google, searching. And it looks like it's found something. Great. So, how far away is the location from my place? It's opening maps. 
searching for the distance between my area and the hiking location. Cool, so now it looks like Plot is searching for the sunrise time tomorrow. and is now dropping it into my calendar. And populating it with some details. And great, it looks like Claude did it. This is a simple example, but we're sharing computer use early to learn from what people build. I'm Alex, I lead developer relations at Anthropic, and today I'm gonna to be showing you a coding task with computer use. So we're gonna be showing Claude doing website coding task by actually controlling my laptop. But before we start coding, we need an actual website for Claude to make changes to. So let's ask Claude to navigate to Claude.ai within my Chrome browser and ask Claude within Claude.ai to create a fun 90s themed personal homepage for itself. Claude opens Chrome, searches for Claude.ai, and then types in a prompt asking the other Claude to create a personal homepage for itself. Claude.ai returns some code, and that gets nicely rendered in an artifact on the right-hand side. That looks great, but I wanna make a few changes to the website locally on my own computer. Let's ask Claude to download the file and then open it up in VS Code. Claude clicks the Save to File button, opens up VS Code, and then finds the file within my Downloads folder and opens it up. Perfect. Now that the file's up and running, let's ask Claude to start up a server so that we can actually view the file within our browser. Claude opens up the VS Code terminal and tries to start a server. But it hits an error. We don't actually have Python installed on our machine. But that's all right because Claude realizes this by looking at the terminal output and then tries again with Python 3, which we do have installed on our machine. That works. So now the server's up and running. Now that we have the local server started, we can go manually take a look at the website within the browser. And it looks pretty good, but I noticed that there's actually an error in the terminal output, and we also have this missing file icon at the top here. Let's ask Claude to identify this error and then fix it within the file. Claude visually reads the terminal output and then opens up the find and replace tool in VS Code to find the line that's throwing the actual error. In this case, we just asked Claude to get rid of the error entirely, so it will just delete the whole line. Then Claude will save the file and automatically rerun the website. So now that the error is gone, let's go take a final look at our website, and we can see that the file icon has disappeared, and the error is gone as well. Perfect, so that's coding with computer use and Claude. This took a few prompts now, but we can imagine in the future that Claude will be able to do tasks like this end-to-end. -end. So I'm Sam, and I'm one of the researchers here at Anthropic. Computer use is something that we felt was going to be important for a while now. So today we're going to be talking about a very early version we have of computer use and walking through a representative example of the things we think it's going to be useful for. We're going to be going through a quick demo today. In this fictional demo, a customer, in this case the Ant Equipment Company, has come to us and asked us to fill out a vendor request form. The data I need to fill out this form is scattered in various places on my computer. What we're going to do is ask Claude to look at the spreadsheet, check if Ant Equipment is in there, and if not, 
move over to the CRM and try and find some more information there. Once it has this data, Claude's going to then fill out the form for us and hopefully transfer the information across to the, the vendor form. First thing that's going to happen is Claude's going to start taking screenshots of my screen and quickly realizes that the Ant Equipment Company isn't actually in the spreadsheet. So the first thing it does is it swaps over to a CRM and searches for the company we're interested in. Luckily, we get a search match and Claude then starts scrolling through the page, looking for all the information it needs to fill out this form. Claude then autonomously starts transferring the information across without me having to do anything. And goes through the, the steps and fills out all the information needed. and then submits the form. This example is representative of a lot of drudge work that people have to do. This is available in the API. We're excited for people to try it and we should expect things to get a lot better over the coming months.